Welcome to our Sound for Video session. Today is the 30th of June, 2019. In this episode, we're going to demonstrate a couple of new plugins from a company called Acusonus. They have their new Era 4 bundle and their Era 4 bundle Pro. We're going to be looking at uh, some of the plugins from each of them. So the Era 4 bundle standard is really focused on making really simple to use plugins that do a really good job. That's, that's the goal. And it's mostly for audio cleanup. So you have a denoiser, a voice leveler, a de-esser, declipper, and a reverb remover, among other things. And we'll look at the full uh, catalog here in just a second. It works with almost all the apps that we're typically used to working with in the independent filmmaking world. So it works with Premiere, Final Cut, Pro Tools, Logic, Audacity, GarageBand, Media Composer, uh, Blackmagic, DaVinci Resolve, Reaper, and Audition. We're going to show in Audition here. Um, as I mentioned before, there are two different packs. There is the Standard and the Pro. The Standard has Noise Remover, Reverb Remover, Plosive Remover, DSer, Declipper, Voice Leveler, and then the Pro version also adds on top of that a DSer Pro and what's called ERA-D. ERA-D is actually one that we demonstrated previously. If you want to check that out, we'll have a link for the previous video in the upper right-hand corner here that you can go and look at that. That one is, and I guess the main difference between the standard plugins and the more pro-level pl plugins is that the pro-level plugins generally give you more controls to fine-tune the processing of the plugin. That's the main difference. The standard ones are generally made to be super simple to use and yet do very high quality processing. So let's take a look here. We're gonna look at three things, uh, two different audio clips. First of all, this is an audio clip that was shot in a public park uh, for a recent short film that I worked on, and it's very noisy. And let me just play through a little bit of it here for you, and then we'll show you the noise remover plug-in. I hear you, and it's it's tough, but we're gonna pull through. You already are. Thanks, buddy. All right, so you can hear there's lots of background noise now. One of the things that I got is a request from the director and um, the DP. So there are three of us basically that worked on the film and then we had some other crew. Levi Whitney was our director of photography. Austin Bereni was our director. Those two came to me and said basically, hey, on as far as audio is concerned, the biggest thing we'd, we don't want is to have something that sounds like a studio recording when it's set in a park. <laughs> and so, but they also didn't want something that was so distracting in terms of background noise that it kind of took you out of the scene as well. So, or it was hard to hear the dialogue. So we had to kind of hit a fine balance. And, and that's, I think, something that's really important to consider is that when you're talking about doing post-processing and using plugins to reduce noise, for example, it is unrealistic to expect that you can take something that was recorded like this out in a park in a public space with lots of background noise and expect it to sound like a studio perfectly clean, perfectly quiet in terms of background noise. Just not gonna happen. You can apply the plugin really, really heavily, but then it's gonna start to sound like it's underwater. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's see what we've got. You can actually show this in different sizes. I made it really big for our purposes here, but you can make it a lot smaller if you need to do that as well. Um, you can see there are very few controls. So we have an on off switch. <laughs> and let me go ahead and um, play back just the default settings here and um, adjust the processing just a little bit so you can see how that's affecting things. So I'll start with it turned off as we're playing through and then I'll change the settings a little bit. I hear you and it's, it's tough, but we're gonna pull through. You already are. Thanks buddy. Okay, so you can see that's actually reduced that background noise a fair bit. It's also reduced the overall loudness a little bit. Um, we can actually change the output level here just a touch here if we wanted to kind of get a sense for what would happen if we loudness normalize it. But in the processing, we can go ahead and add basically what's makeup gain. I hear you, and it's it's tough, but we're gonna pull through. You already are. Thanks, buddy. I hear you, and it's it's tough, but we're gonna pull through. You already are. 
So I think somewhere around the 40 to 45 percent range is sounding pretty good. It is reducing some of that background noise, but it's not making it sound artificial and adding all these weird artifacts to the actual dialogue. So that's one thing you can do. The only other setting really, well, there are a couple others. One, if we had some sort of buzz or hiss, um, sorry, a buzz or maybe more of a tonal type thing that sat at a particular frequency, you could use this. They actually recommend not applying this too heavily because it can actually cut into the dialogue a fair bit, but it's there for emergencies if you need it. You also have an A-B, so you have two different sets of settings you can use if you want to kind of test out a couple of different settings and uh, hear them next to each other. You can just flip that A-B switch. And then we have what's called the focus here. The focus is actually made for situations where you have the noise that's sitting primarily in a particular part of the frequency range. So if you wanted to focus on those parts, you could. And that's this is where the processing will be applied in earnest. Generally, for kind of broadband noise like we're working with here, generally going to want to use this all-frequency focus. So there's an example of the noise remover and what you can expect from it. So that's one. Let's go ahead and take a look at this very reverberant recording. Uh, you may need headphones. If you don't have headphones with you, you might want to come back to this when you do. It's going to be a much clearer example if you do. If you're trying to listen to it on your phone speakers, chances are you're not going to be able to hear the difference. So just wanted to give that warning as well. Let's run through this without any processing. Is that a light at the end of the tunnel? We're in a stairwell, and the stairwell is quite reverberant. Okay, so that's where we're starting from. Let's see what happens when we apply the reverb remover. So let's go take a look at the documentation here and see what this auto does. It's really good that they documented this here. Reverb remover features also an auto option which automatically optimize, optimizes the output level. So that's just gonna kind of manage this output level for you. So if we put that at zero, let's see what it does when we play back. Is that a light at the end of the tunnel? We're in a stairwell, and the stairwell is quite reverberant. I think that's the technical term, but it, somebody else might say echoey. It sounds like my voice is bouncing off the walls. Okay, so you can tell as we increase the processing strength here, um, we, can, we get a couple of things. It starts to sound um, a little boxy, uh, almost like a blanket is being held up to the person's mouth. Let's try it again. Is that a light at the end of the tunnel? We're in a stairwell, and the stairwell is quite reverberant. I think that's the technical term, but it, somebody else might say echoey. It sounds like my voice is bouncing off the walls. So there's a little bit of a trade-off. Let's look at the focus and when we might want to use these different focus options. So if we come back over here to the documentation here really quickly. So of course the all frequency focus applies the same processing to the full frequency spectrum of the signal or the audio. The high frequency uh, focuses on the high end. It just really kind of depends on the type of reverb you have that you're trying to remove. So that's what really those are about. But here's a tip. These buttons are helpful when the undesired reverberation take up a specific part of the frequency spectrum. You can use the appropriate setting to tell reverb remover to apply most of the processing on those frequencies. This will reduce processing on other frequencies and leave your main signal as natural as possible. So let's assume that it's mostly a low frequency. Let's try that. Is that a light at the end of the tunnel? We're in a stairwell, and the stairwell is quite reverberant. I think that's the technical term, but it, somebody else might say echoey. It sounds like my voice is bouncing off the wall. I actually think that sounds a little bit more natural. So it's taking care of, it's focusing more on the low frequencies. Um, you could do high and low frequencies. Let's see how that does. Is that a light at the end of the tunnel? We're in a stairwell and the stairwell is quite reverberant. I think that's the technical term, but it, somebody else might say echoey. It sounds like my voice is bouncing off the walls. I think it actually sounds most natural with this low frequency focus. And uh, so there's an example of using a reverb remover. Let's do one more thing. We do have a little bit of uh, sibilance in the voice here. Let me just play through and listen for the S's and the C's and the T's. Is that a light at the end of the tunnel? We're in a stairwell in the stair. So let's turn on our DSer Pro. Now we have some presets, it looks like. 
let's try female speech. Interesting. What it does is it seems to add some presets here. So you have an input level, an output level, a focus where you choose the frequency where the sibilance is most likely occurring, and then the shaping where it's either soft or sharp, and then the processing. So let's go ahead and start with it off, and then we'll turn it on halfway through. Is that a light at the end of the tunnel? We're in a stairwell, and the stairwell is quite reverberant. I think that's the technical term, but it, somebody else might say echoey. It sounds like my voice is bouncing off the walls. Okay, one thing that you can do to help find the frequency is you can turn on this little speaker icon here, which will play back just the, the frequency or right around the frequency that you select here, and that'll help you find the sibilance. Let's do that. We're in a stairwell, and the stairwell is quite reverberant. I think that's the technical term, but it, somebody else might say echoey. It sounds like my voice is bouncing off the walls. Okay, so that did a pretty nice job there for us. Um, again, you can start with the preset and then kind of tweak the settings to fit the particular situation you saw here. We ended up moving the focus up a little bit more to the 6,483 6, hertz range. I did that by turning on this little speaker icon, which just played right around that frequency range, so you could identify the sibilance. I backed off the processing a little bit to 46%, and I just left the shaping where it was. You could also tweak that to see um, you know, what, what kind of effect it has on the particular vocal processing that you're doing. So there's a quick look at some of the different plugins. Now you can see, because this is, they call this the pro version, there's also a non-pro version. The pro version had these additional settings you could use to kind of fine tune the effect that you're getting, which I think is really helpful. So there's a quick look at the new Era 4 bundle from Acusanos. If you were looking for some plugins, this could be a good place to start. This is, I guess it's really kind of a competitor with Isotope RX and I think probably one of the questions I'll get is, well, which one is better? Well, I think that RX is a little bit more, um, the RX has more flexibility. You generally have more controls on what set on the, all the various settings. Acusanus' standard Era 4 bundle is really focused on making it as simple as possible to get the effects you want. So if you need something that's really simple and you don't want to futz around with all the different settings, maybe Era 4 Bundle would be a better choice for you. If, on the other hand, you want a little bit more control, either the Era 4 Bundle Pro or Isotope RX may be a better choice. So definitely getting lots of good options out there in the marketplace. It's good to see these plugins coming out. Again, we showed how to use this in Adobe Audition, but you can use it in most video editing apps and other digital audio workstations as well. So hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll talk to you again next week. Bye.